So I'm calling upon Dr. Jurek, Air Conditioning, Heating and Refrigeration, Refrigeration Institute, superare gli attuali refrigeranti. Uh, thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Um, Steve Yurick with the uh, Air Conditioning, Heating, and Refrigeration Institute. Very quickly, AHRI uh, is a trade association that represents the manufacturers of heating, air conditioning, ventilation, and refrigeration equipment, um, approximately 300 and some members. We are the manufacturers, the OEMs, the component manufacturers, the producers. Uh, our members, even though we're based in North America, represent 70 plus percent of all HVACR uh, products sold worldwide. Um, we're actually engaged in standards certification and advocacy, in particular as it relates to energy and environmental issues that impact this industry. And I appreciate the, the opportunity to be here today to talk about some things. I'm going to start by going back to the beginning yesterday uh, morning when you heard uh, Mr. Cullen and Mr. Colm talk about the vital nature of refrigerants and how they impact everyday life, both in air conditioning as well as in refrigeration, in improving the health, productivity, and safety, and also pointing to a study um, that was just completed that was referenced yesterday from MIT. In the past, we've always heard about heating being a safety uh, issue, but now also cooling in being an important thing for keeping people healthy and living longer and, and more productive lives. At the same time, we've been talking about refrigerants, and I'm going to kind of shift away from the F-gas focus to a, a much broader global discussion on refrigerants and things that you need to think about as we talk about refrigerants and, and where we go. You know, needing to maintain refrigerant choice, evaluating the characteristics, we need to have predictability, and we also need to educate not just the policymakers, but also the training of the technicians. You should have another square before you have CFCs over there, actually, which should be uh, hydrocarbons, ammonia, and CO2, um, was where we started off as an industry, went to CFCs, HCFCs, HFCs, and now it looks like we're going full circle and heading back to using hydrocarbons, CO2, ammonia, where appropriate uh, for different uh, technologies. This is a busy graph, and what I'm trying to show here is if you look at the right, um, that's where we are today. And on the bottom uh, axis is the GWP level, and the uh, horizontal, uh, the vertical axis is uh, pressure and, and capacity. Today we're over to the right, and to be there, and the reason we're there, is because these uh, refrigerants are very efficient and they're very safe. We need, now know we need to start moving towards the left, lower GWP, but to do that, we have to give some things up. There's going to be some flammability. There's going to be some toxicity. There's going to be some things that we need to deal with that we haven't had to deal with under the, the current regime of refrigerants. And with that, when we make a selection in choosing a refrigerant, we need to understand the refrigerant's unique operating characteristics. You know, how do they operate? What's necessary for them? And it can't be just based on one factor, but it leads to look at the safety, the energy efficiency, is it widely available, uh, is it economical, and also the global warming potential of that refrigerant. And we need to understand that the operating factors are different for each refrigerant. There's different pressures, there's incompatible lubricants, metals, alloys, and then you also have the flammability levels that you need to look at. And needs will be different for each application. And I think this is a point that was made earlier this morning. The day of having one refrigerant, you know, we had CFC 11, we had R22, that could be used widely across many different applications is gone. And there's going to be multiple refrigerants for different applications and for different areas of the world. And with that, when we make a selection, we need to avoid unintended consequences. The discussion just uh, before I came up uh, was a question related to the echo design and the uh, ch choice of refrigerants. And uh, I'm very concerned that uh, the EU has taken a position 
that they give actually a bonus to uh, products that use what they claim uh, environmentally friendly uh, refrigerants that have lower GWP by giving a 5% or whatever else bonus in being able to use more energy. That does not recognize the fact that the direct impact of refrigerants is much smaller than the life cycle impact of the energy use of a piece of equipment. They need to be treated the same and you need to look at both the direct and the indirect impact of the use of equipment. You also need to look at safety, performance, economics, and again, the environment. With that, I'm going to talk briefly on some refrigerant research that we're doing and addressing the question uh, that was asked yesterday. Uh, AHRI, uh, throughout the transition from uh, CFCs to HCFCs to HFCs and now to the next generation of refrigerants, has conducted research. Um, we have a low GWP alternative refrigeration evaluation program. Uh, this program is testing uh, refrigerants in different types of equipment. The purpose is not to prioritize the refrigerants, but really test the refrigerants and give results that then can be used by engineers, technicians, uh, manufacturers, policymakers to evaluate what is the appropriate refrigerant for different applications. Um, we have a, a global uh, program. We have 16 U.S. companies, five international companies, and then six refrigerant producers that pro provided 38 different refrigerant candidates, including hydrocarbons, ammonia, CO2, as well as the HFOs and, and other blends. Um, as you can see, the test covered uh, the wide variety of HVACR products. And through that testing, which we are just finishing up now, that testing, the reason we could do so many tests and cover so many refrigerants is the manufacturers that participate in this program donated the equipment as well as their lab time to test these products and these different refrigerants. Um, right now we have 16 reports um, that are on our uh, website. By the end of September, we're hoping to have all 38 uh, test reports um, available for the 38 different refrigerants. Um, the website here uh, is where you can get them. They're free. You can download them. We're having a, a conference prior to the eight HR Expo uh, around the, as the ASHRAE meeting as well in January, on January 16th in New York, to talk about these tests and these results. And we're also looking at doing a second round of uh, refrigerant testing for a couple more refrigerants that uh, weren't available at the time that we started the program, but also looking at higher ambient temperatures, particularly looking at T3 conditions, which are the, the high uh, temperature conditions. We've also done other research. I know everybody's asking about safety and risk. Uh, we did two risk uh, assessments. We had a risk assessment of residential heat pumps using T 2L refrigerants. Uh, through this analysis showed a very low risk uh, of ig uh, having an ignite. We also looked at uh, current uh, air conditioning heat pump systems and developed configurations uh, using, as you can see, hydrocarbons, ammonia, CO2, uh, HFOs and designing equipment that would meet uh, the safety requirements uh, in being able to be used. Of course, you can look at this report. This is the original research. The next stage is then making and developing products that could be commercially viable and, and sold into the marketplace. I'm showing this graph again just to remind you about the complexity where we're going from the, the right to over to the left because I want to talk a little bit about training. We've talked an awful lot amongst OEMs, amongst producers, amongst policymakers about where we're going with refrigerant. We haven't talked to the people in the field, the people that are installing our equipment and maintaining our equipment. And we need to let them know what's going on, but also have programs to educate them on what these different refrigerants are, what their different operating characteristics are, what can be used with them, what oils, what metals, so that they understand um, what they're going to be using. Because when they walk into a, a building and they go up to the roof, they might be finding a, a unit that has CO2 in it, ammonia, a hydrocarbon, uh, an HFO, or an, an HFC. What we need to do is we need to come together. Um, this is a common issue. It's not just Europe. 
It's not just America. It's not just Asia. This is a common issue, and we need to develop those programs. With that, as an industry, we understand the policy interests and the need in addressing high GWP refrigerants. As an industry, we are moving forward very quickly. But we need adequate time to properly research the alternatives, to then engineer products that can use those alternatives safely. And then finally, the most important thing is to develop the capacity to manufacture, to distribute, and sell those products. It all takes time. You can't be done overnight, uh, and, and we need that predictability. As an industry, we have a, a record uh, of doing this. We have the success of the Montreal Protocol, uh, and we just need to make sure we seize this opportunity not to just do it regionally, but do it globally. So thank you.